Okay, down here again. Okay, we're back on uh, the whole idea of if Lucky back up here, what might, if there's anything going wrong with it. Um, I'm on Lenovo i5. And uh, I don't want to take the time to do a desktop video, so this is kind of a note to self. But I went through and kind of, you know, panned through this very long list of files copied and scanned and the ones I copied. And the end result was uh, no, no errors and uh, 5.66 gigabyte copied. So, um, I think that's really crazy, kind of strange, because, <coughs> um, you know, it had ran, and it had uh, copied, uh, like, I, I have it back MC, like right in here, I don't know if you can read it, but uh, dot .thunderbird, those are the ones that looked like they were missing, you know, the Thunderbird and dot .mozilla and stuff like that that I had put in there. It looked like it was only copying my regular documents, pictures, and stuff like that files. That looked like it was all that was the, the profile had in it. And I looked at it over and over, but I, so I'm going to say, um, anyway, it did it. It copied uh, my dot .folders. Actually, I don't remember seeing anything about any of the regular folders just all the dot folders that got copied so that seems like that might have not been getting copied in it copied is judging by the amount oh it's back to normal look at that now and uh, here's what I'm wondering though uh, maybe it depends see there's two ways you can go into a lucky backup and it does get confusing because uh, that just where that was you know those are none of those are selected but yeah here's my uh, selected directories this is my setup and then this is a uh, home don uh, app direct directories dears that's the ones that get the dot files and everything so I won't mess with that okay that's all good that's what it's supposed to do now I'm gonna close it that ran automatically just like it was supposed to now let's see we're going to Lucky. As soon as this app search comes up, yeah. See, this is what you get, and this is how I've always gone into this app whenever I want to just go into it. Lucky backup, and then Lucky backup super user or root user, and that had no profiles in it, which is what I actually expected. <coughs> if you go into it this way, let's see if it does this again. The, it's the same way. Look there. There's only one profile, that, and it's the one I selected and saved a uh, um, while ago because I thought, oh, there's something wrong. Okay, now I'm going to do it this way. Now I'll go into Super User just to make sure. And I've got to type in my password. So, uh, I got it wrong. It's hard to do with one hand. I'm so used to typing with both hands. Of course, you can't read that, or I wouldn't be showing it. But uh, see, it's empty. Um, that's the way I expected it to be. That's the way I remembered having it set up. Because uh, when you put stuff in the super user, then you got to be running a super user for it to work. Actually, I think over the years it's kind of gone back and forth. I've been using this since I started Linux in 2005, and I discovered it not very long. I don't know if it's that year or a year or two later. I can't remember. But uh, I've been using Lucky Backup for quite a few years. So now let me go in here and the regular apps menu and see what's going on. I'm beginning to think that you get to uh, a slightly different window of it. Don't think it's a different version or anything. I mean, I don't see how it could be. Okay, system tools. Let's see. Okay, I don't see it in there. There it is. Lucky backup super user. Let's see what happens when you go there. Okay, same thing. It let me go straight into it since I just put in my password. Just save my root privileges. 
And see, anytime I type in my root password, I get that. I was talking about that uh, error in that other video because I was talking about two, two or three different things in that video. F print D, and that's what you get. And uh, list all alerts. F print D, and then if you go into uh, this is on all the alerts I've ever had. So it tells you how many times, 550 times. So whenever you have to type in your root password, that's when you get that. Um, attempt to access wake alarm. See, it's what it is. It says an odd, odd app to be doing something like wake alarm. It's really kind of strange. It's a bug. I'm sure. So let's see. Troubleshoot. And it says, um, well, you wrote in here, it says um, today, 2017. If you go to the previous, that's uh, 10, July 10th, 2016. And if you go through them all, they're all in 2016. So, um, and it depends on it says what do you you know what do you believe is going on here well I don't I don't really know so I, d I don't want to turn it on and besides like I said uh, if you think it says if you think it uh, doesn't usually say that you should report this as a bug if you think uh, that it should be allowed to do that and then this is how to generate a local policy and allow it to happen and all that but I just don't do anything with it because it doesn't cause me any trouble and cause anything to not work Anyway, that really I don't, don't have anything to do with uh, Lucky Backup. Because I know because it happens when I go into Yum Package Manager. Or, well, if I type in Yum, I'll show you what I mean. I installed Yum because I like the interface better. If I type that in, uh, it, it's actually I finally think I figured out that I, you have to go and manually change some settings in DNF to get it. It wasn't showing all the apps that are available. And that's why I didn't like using it. But I think I'd have to... Uh, yeah, it's asking me for my password, but I'm going to try and cancel out of it because uh, anyway, it'll that one away this time, but it will uh, it'll do that when you, when you go ahead and log in and everything. Anytime you type in your your password, it seems to be when that F print D error happens. But let's see, I'm going to go into accessories. There's Lucky Backup. You see the the regular user is in accessories, and the super user is in system tools. Now that still doesn't have that. Um, extra setup that I have. Oh, I just remembered. This is my default profile. Right here, you have to change profiles. And what I had done, well, no, it's not in there. Okay. I'm going to leave that like that because make sure I get all my backups that I don't want. Okay, now let me go back to super user maybe I'm remembering it all wrong there, there, well if you want to write certain directories that have you know root privileges then you can't without using the super user mode okay default and default done that's my problem there we go oh that's aggravating and there's no way to make that be when you've set you know there's no way to make your your custom profile be default so what happened is some of the things I wanted to write you can back up all your own personal directories just fine, especially to like the external drive I have and everything, USB drive, with no problems with permissions or anything. But if you want to uh, uh, back up any files that are protected, you know, for uh, even in your home directory, there are a few files that are protected. And if you want to do that, then it won't work unless you're using Super Root Lucky Backup Super User. And if you set it to run, you know, as a, where is it? Somewhere in here is where you set it to, uh, somewhere in there. I don't even remember because I've got had it set up for a long time. Schedule. You set it to run on a schedule, then in, uh, super, root user will run automatically, but, you, but if you wanted to run it from root user, then you have to log in as root and all that stuff, or put in your root password, I mean. Okay, so there we go. So that's my problem. There's no problem. The only problem is my memory doesn't work. Yeah, so all I had to do, and what I had done, the reason that is even like that, I wanted to import this one from my regular user, and then I wanted to um, um, 
and I, this is the one that I had to use it under super user. So when I found out that things were, there were some things that weren't backing up like they were supposed to. So I thought, oh yeah, I forgot, you know, and I built it all up in regular user and I needed to build it up in super user so that it, nothing gets left behind that you want backed up. There's some, there's quite a few different little idiosyncrasies with the file permissions that might cause some of the things, even though they're in your home directory, to not get backed up. When I say home directory, I mean home done. And, and these ones with the dot in front, they have to do with your applications and stuff. Those are automatically named like that. I mean, you could do that if you wanted, but I don't like that. I, I don't do that. It just makes it harder to find them when you want to find them. But, um, so, there we go. Note to self again. I knew I, I knew when I did that I'd forget that, but see, so you can't, when you import, what you can do, you can go here and say, uh, export or import. So I exported it from regular user and then imported it. And when I imported it and I wanted to save it, I couldn't save it as just default. I had to give it a different name. That's the way the program works. So as much as I love this program, it still has some things that are aggravating about it. So that's it. Okay, everything's fine. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave that other one running. It may make it run a little longer, but that way I know for sure I'm getting everything because it did. Oh, well, that run was just a normal run because it ran this profile. It didn't run that other profile. I don't think it ran it at all. It'd be kind of hard to tell if it tried to run it twice, though, wouldn't it? Because. Let's see what's in there. Selected directories, modify, advanced. Yeah, include, yeah, I have more in there than I did in the other one. I remember that. Okay, hit cancel. This one, modify, advanced. Yeah, and see all these, I have particular dot directories. Actually, I ended up, I started out putting the specific ones in there, and then I thought, wait a minute, I want to make sure I get just everything. So it, I added one that was wild cards to just everything with a dot. It didn't hurt anything. Uh, didn't seem to, you know, give any glitches, so I left it like that rather than delete all those other directories. Uh, setups in there. I'm going to say I don't want to change it because I don't know what I just did. Let me go to back in there and see if it looks okay. And it all looks okay. Okay. Now let's go to lucky backup. Regular user. <coughs> I kind of have a feeling I should take that out of there. That's why that was like that. Is because I'm not using that. I'm using the super user profile. Okay. Sorry, I keep hand keeps slipping. All right, so there we go. We're all good. It's just that I had that uh, worrisome, I think that folder, the more I think about it, I'll bet you anything it was Energia IDE that was doing, see it even asked you if you want to run that because it wasn't installed from the repos and it says that that's not actually completely normal. I did do that. And it is, in, I think it's installed. You can run some things just from the folder uh, but I believe I in. Now you know what this one I think is just running from a folder and that's why it does that. The ones that you actually install don't necessarily always do that. Okay so anyway uh, this IDE, Energia IDE is really just a, a clone of the uh, Adreno IDE that, that Texas Instruments set up to run on. It has support for their boards so uh, I'm just going to see if I could uh, Was I going to see? Oh, the update setting. That's what I wanted to see. Update. Check for updates on startup. Oh, on startup. I don't see anything about automatic updates in there, though. It's hard for me to hold the phone where I can read, though. Let's see. Update sketch files. Check for updates on startup. Well, I don't. I, I thought I would think that means startup of the app, but maybe it means startup of the system. But maybe I think it does because I think I caught it updating before when I hadn't opened the app. So, yeah, that's probably. I think it, that folder. Let me look in my. Uh, look at my pictures here. Hmm. 
Let's see. If I organize it newest on top, then I'll find it. And I'm not sure what my last screenshot was. I've been doing several different screenshots for different reasons. So, Yeah, that's that. And what was I going to look at? Oh, that folder. Yeah, what that folder was. See, this is when I was looking through Lucky Backup, trying to figure it all out. And those, those, uh, I see Linux notices. And that's something else. See, now it's getting out of order. Yeah, sometimes this crazy thing. Let's start with the first one of today. Let's see, 515. It doesn't do them in order the way it should. There it is. Update.test. And that seemed unusual to me. That's why I was like, huh? Yeah, update.test. That's why I, I, I've seen, like I said, some of those applications like uh, Energia and stuff, up when they're updating themselves, put a temporary folder in there. But it said update.test. And I thought, that's what made me go, what? And then when I tried to go to it, that that's really what? That's when I went, oh, what is all this here? It said the update.test could not be found. Perhaps it has recently been deleted. And I thought, what does that? Well, if you're on a Windows system and you see that, you probably got some malware virus or the worm, you know. Malware virus worm. I don't know why they want to use so many different words. But anyway. Uh, ransomware has been in the news this week. But this is, you know, Linux. So, But still, sometimes... There's only been a once or twice that I had any malware on here on a on a on not here this system but on a Linux system. First time it ever happened, it was a website that actually destroyed my operating system. It didn't I didn't lose my files, but I lost the operating system. Never did quite figure out how that worked, but it did it. And that was way back in like 2005, six, seven, something like that. And. Uh, I think one other time maybe I'm not sure I think I'm uh, I don't you know what I think there hasn't ever been an actual damage to any systems there have been a few times when I had something that worried me but it turned out I think it turned out to be no no problem yeah no that's the only time any kind of malware ever hurt a Linux system that I've had that was like Fedora 5 or 6 or 7 or something but anyway I have had them break for other reasons but usually something I did or so, all right, I'm fine then. I don't know. Okay, here's the other thing I was talking about. This program, see there's two of them on here now. Baloo, XR check. Uh, they're just little temp files. This, uh, this is what I don't like about the way Fedora 23. This started with Fedora 23, I believe. Or, well, it could have been 22 because I, I think I skipped from 21 to 23. But anyway. Uh, I don't think I have Bolu on here. <coughs> well, we'll see if I can go find out. Whoa, I can't reach it. I'm, using my, I'm trying to use my normal EALO, normal keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time, and it can't hardly do it with one, one hand. Normally, I don't do these handheld videos anymore on the desktop, but I just didn't want to go through all the trouble of getting out my mic and all that. the wrong password anyway okay so if we get into of course it automatically it is yum extender the same app that I always used or one of, one of the ones I always used but when you does any work it does it I'm, I'm copying and pasting blue in there it um, it has to use DNF, so it, but it's so far it's still. I don't know what'll happen in the future. I may have to start using DNF, but I like the interface of the application better. And like, and like I said, for the longest time, uh, none of the apps I was it was like a very small amount of apps that it was showing up. It turned out it was in the settings up 
here. But uh, I don't know why in the heck they had it set to default to not show everything, you know, when you do a search for apps like I'm doing right now. You know, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But they keep fixing it anyway. Actually, there were things that were broken. Uh, Yum, uh, Yum has grown over the years and actually bloated over the years and it got to where it used so much resources that it would barely run on an older machine anymore. No, it's still installed. Blue Anaconda. Indexer. It's an indexer. Okay. For what? The search. Uh, excuse me. Indexer and search plugin for Anaconda. Anaconda. That's the installer, isn't it? What is Anaconda? Desktop search. Oh. Why did I even think I wanted that? Oh, I th probably thought it'd be better than the default desktop search. You know, it makes me wonder. Problem is when you install things and they have a bunch of dependencies and then you go and they may be shared by other apps and then if you go to uninstall it, uh, it wants to uninstall those dependencies and it may break the apps you want to keep. So sometimes you get stuck and that might be why it's still on there. I don't know. Really don't remember. And there's their web, one of the pages on their website from that app, that first app I clicked on. So that's what it is. It's something to do with some desktop search. I just remembered that I installed it and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to be. So nothing there. I couldn't see a way to. Well, I, I kind of remember that I didn't see. Framework for searching and managing metadata. It's a background app. It's. I don't think there was a. I don't think there's a GUI. Yes, there's no G graphic user interface for it. So I don't like to mess with command line apps. I can't see straight enough or remember the commands. Uh, very basic stuff like yum update and stuff. Or copy and paste, you know, things. I'll do that when I need to. But if I can do it in the, in the graphic user interface, then I will. Okay, so that's it. So that's that's why it keeps coming up. I thought I, I, I probably said, oh, I should uninstall that and try to uninstall it. And then it... Uh, probably going to take out other a whole bunch of other uh, dependencies that I was afraid would break things I like on here so I left it alone but once I reboot those will be gone uh, they just random seemingly randomly come up but I guess it's when it's doing its indexing but see that you didn't used to see all this stuff uh, on your desktop um, you had to um, there was a home okay, what I'm there used to be a home don desktop folder, a home user desktop folder. Now, your desktop folder is your home don home or you, you know your home user, whatever your username is. I don't know why they did that. There was nothing wrong with the other way. It made perfect sense and it worked better. But anyway, now you get this all this crap on your desktop all the time. So, <coughs> uh, everything's working fine. Backups are working. Only, only, only malfunction here today was my memory, which is not unusual whatsoever. All right, bye, bye. Cool car, huh?